Hi, Shasta High School Mathematics Algebra 2. This is Mr. Roberts. Uh, today we're going to be looking at using our TI calculator, either 83 pluses, 84, 84 plus, uh, to perform linear regression uh, to plot some bivariate statistical data um, and to determine the strength and the direction of any possible relationship uh, within a data set. Uh, specifically, we're looking um, for linear linear relations, say just straight line data. We'll talk about other regression techniques later on. Um, but here's a data set, and uh, I I believe that it's it's pretty um, reasonable. It's a reasonable assumption that uh, you know there's a relationship between the length of your humerus bone and the height. Um, and, uh, you know, I, it, from my experience, I don't see really short people with long arms. And I don't see really, really tall people with short arms. They seem to kind of go together proportionally. Um, so this seems like a, a probably a very strong uh, candidate for a linear uh, relationship. Um, let's talk about, let me, let me turn on the uh, detached LCD screen so you can see it here as well. A little bit larger. So, um, So the calculator is turned on. This this calculator has been completely reset, so it's like it's it's brand new. And uh, I'm going to show you first of all how to enter this data set into our calculator to uh, just graph it. First of all, it's a statistics plot, a scatter plot. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to hit the stat button, which is located right there, S T A T. And once we press the stat button, we're going to go uh, nowhere because we want to do enter, I, we want to edit some data. So we're going to hit stat, and then option one is edit. I'm going to press enter to get that. You can see I have um, three lists that are visible, list one, list two, and list three. Uh, if, for example, you, you find that you turn your calculator on and you have some data in it, um, and you need to clear it out for a problem you're doing, one of the things, the best thing to do is just bring your arrow up so that you're at the top of that list, so the L1 selected, and then press the clear button. So it'll say list one equals, and then you press enter, and it'll completely clear the list. Um, a lot of times what students will do is they'll go up to the top there, and they'll hit the delete button. And let me show you what happens when you do that. If you hit the delete button, list one completely goes away. You're like, ah, how do I get my list one back? Um, to, to, to bring that list back, it's pretty straightforward. You just need to hit second, and then go to INS for insert. And you can see it kicked over a blank slot for a new list. And your lists are down here on list uh, button one has list one, two's on list two, etc. So you're just going to hit second function and then uh, list one, and then press enter, and it'll put list one back there. So I've got this uh, now set up so I can see list one, and list two, and what we're going to do is we're going to enter our x values, the the length of the humerus into list one. So you can see the numbers here. I've got a 25. Enter. I've, um, no, I'm sorry, that's not 25. It's a good thing that I'm doing some error checking here. We've got a 35 and then a 27. Uh, you go ahead and enter the data. I'm going to enter it as well. And I'm going to pause the video right now. Okay, so I've entered uh, all of my data. And basically, once I finished entering list one, I just went over and back up at the top and I entered all the corresponding values in, in list two. So you now can see that uh, when I look, for example, I've got this this point right here, 35167, is listed in my very first column right here. And then I've got the 27146, the 30154, the 33165, the 25140, the 39180, the 27149, and then I don't know, let's see, oops, can I go down? The last one is the 30, 31, 155. So you can see I've got all the data entered in my list. Um, one of the things to, to check out is how um, the calculator tells you how many data points you have stored. Um, so when I look at it, it says right now that I'm in a, I'm in row eight. It means there's eight data points that are stored in the calculator. Um, if I went down one more, you can see there's row nine. Row nine is below that. Um, an important thing to remember uh, to know is that when your calculator tries to plot this data, 
or perform a regression analysis, there needs to be an equal number of uh, items in list one and list two. Because remember, what our calculator is going to be doing is we're going to tell it, for example, that our, our x values are stored in list one and our y values are stored in list two. And if it gets to the point where it has an extra x value or too many x or not enough x values to go with the y values, uh, it's not going to be able to do its job. So I've got an equal number in each. At this point, we're going to go ahead and plot the data and just look at it and kind of see visually uh, what we think the deal is with the relationship between the length of the humerus and the height. Now, to do this, I'm going to hit second and then go to, oops, I need to clear it, get my pen out of here, and hit second and then go to stat plot. So stat plot is the button right above y equals. And I have uh, several different stat plots I can set up and turn on simultaneously. I'm just doing one. So from this first one, plot one, I'm going to press enter. And you can see it's currently turned off. I know that it's off because the, the black box is around off. Now, my cursor is flashing on on, and if I press enter, you can see that it's switched over. And now on is, is highlighted in black. Uh, there are several types below. You can see we've got a histogram, line graph. We want to want the first one there, which is a scatter plot. So it's already selected. I don't need to change anything. And then it asks, where's your data coming from? You've got, and I'm telling it, my x values are coming from list one, and my y values are coming from list two. And then you can pick a symbol that you want for the data. This is a fine symbol. It's going to put a little box there. Now, now that that's all set up, in theory, I should be able to come over and just hit graph and take a look at that. And you can see once I do, I got a problem, right? My problem is not that it didn't do its job. My problem is that my window is pretty small. In fact, if I if I look at the, the window, um, these values are from negative 10 to 10, negative 10 to 10. So, you know, when you look at the data here, the, the smallest data point I have, I think it's like 20, 25, 140. So all of those are gonna be way off in the upper upper right hand corner so we're not going to see any of those right here now I could look at this these numbers and I could manually adjust my window but I think a super easy way to do this is to just hit zoom and then go down to um, it's right here in this calculator it's number nine zoom stat and what zoom stat will do is it'll look at the x values and the y values that you have in stored list one and list two and it'll adjust the window size so it'll perfectly fit that data. So if I press enter right now, you can see it it redrew the window. It's a different window size. In fact, if I hit window, you can see now all the window numbers have totally updated automatically. If I go go back to my graph, there's there's the stat plot. So when I look at this, to me I see a very clear linear relationship. In fact, I see a pretty strong linear relationship. But let me talk about that for a minute. So um let me shrink that down for a minute here. So when we look at data, we know that we have a linear relationship if it looks like you know the, the data is approximating a line to some degree. This is a very strong linear relationship, right? There's, a, there's clearly a line that's, that's in here somewhere. Um, and if you look below, you know, this first scatter plot with the red dots, um, Clearly, as the x values are increasing, the y values are also getting larger, right? So, and you can see it's kind of, you know, it's, it, all the data points are certainly not on a straight line, but they're clustering around that straight line to a great, to a large extent. Um, the next one over, um, this one, um, it looks as x values are increasing, the y values appear to be decreasing in general. So again, I, I can see here, you know, a, a linear relationship. It certainly looks less strong than the first relationship because the dots are not quite as close to that straight line. They're more spread out. Um, so it's not as strong as a, a, a linear relationship. And in the last case, I don't really see any, any relationship at all. Now, what I've just described are um, the, you know, the, the range of possibilities um, in fact, there's one measure metric that we use for describing um, both the intensity or the strength of a linear relationship and its direction, and that's the correlation coefficient. Um, 
correlation coefficient values range between negative 1 and positive 1. If you have values that are equal to negative 1, that means you have a very, very, very tight um, negative relationship. Meaning literally, um, if, if I drew this, right, all of those dots would be exactly on that line. All these red dots would be clustered on the line, not just near it. Um, but the direction is, because it's a negative one, the correlation coefficient, that means that as x's are increasing, y's are decreasing, right? The variables are not going up or down together. Um, if you had a perfect positive correlation, uh, it would look, you know, like all these dots would be just hovering just on top of that line, and that would be positive one. So correlation coefficients become range between negative one and positive one. The variable that we use for them is r, and as r gets, um, I guess it could include the endpoints, as r's get closer and closer to one, the relationship is tighter and tighter and tighter. This particular data set here, this looks like it might have a correlation coefficient of you know, zero or somewhere around zero. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what it would be, but it's certainly not close to one or negative one. Just meaning there's not a real strong relationship there. Um, certainly, you know, by the time a correlation coefficient approaches 0 0.7, 0 0.8, it's a very, very strong relationship. But it's very, very strong, you know, when it's reaching the 0 0.9, 0 0.95 range. Um, we're going to now, <clears throat> what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how to calculate the correlation coefficient for this data and then have your calculator actually draw the, the line of best fit um, for, for a linear set. So this next step you only need to do once and uh, once this is done, it's, it's done forever unless you undo this for, on your calculator or reset your calculator. So don't worry that you think you've got to do this next step all the time. What we're going to do is uh, hit the button second, and we're going to go down to catalog, which is on zero. Once we hit second catalog, we're going to go down to, and, and you, I can go down a long ways here. We need to go down to the letter D. You can see alpha is already lit up here, so if I come in, I just press the letter D, A, B, C, D. It'll jump to the Ds in the list. So now I just need to go a little bit further down until I get to diagnostics. You can see there's two choices there, diagnostics on and diagnostics off. We're going to select diagnostics on. Once I do that, it says, hey, I'm ready to turn diagnostics on. Press enter again, and it'll say done. So at this point, this calculator now has its diagnostics turned on. And that's going to allow it to calculate correlation coefficients, among other things, for me. Um, so let's take a look at the correlation coefficient from the data that we had earlier from this data set. Um, in order to do that, we're going to press statistics again, stat again. Remember, we were here once already. We were here once when we were entering our data under stat edit. And if I certainly needed to change those, if I press enter right now, you can see, uh, whoops, if I press enter again, you can see all the data is still there. But that's not what we're doing. We're going to hit stat, and we're going to go over to calculate, which is a second column over. And if I scroll down to option number four, it says lin reg AX plus B. This is abbreviation for linear regression, and it's going to generate an equation of the form A times X plus B, right? Where A is the, the slope of the line, and B is the Y intercept. So I'm going to press enter, and um, it's on the 83 and the ATI 84s will ask you more. You're just going to need to go down into where you say calculate. Here it doesn't ask you anything <clears throat> because we've already specified where our data is and we can't change that here. I'm just going to press enter <clears throat> and my calculator comes back and it says the following. Okay, I've performed least squares linear regression for you. And I've decided that the line of best fit has a slope of about 2.75, and it has a y-intercept around 71, you know, 72. It's in that neighborhood. Um, the correlation coefficient is, is represented by r here, and your correlation coefficient is 0.99. Very, very strong positive correlation, right? very clear that as one variable is increasing, the other variable goes up with it. Um, so 
now that we see that, you know, I can I can write down what R is and keep track of it, right? This R, the correlation coefficient for this problem is 0.99. Now I want to ask the calculator to go ahead and plot that that line of best fit so I can, you know, see it on, on my graph also. So to do that, um, I'm going to um, go ahead and quit this. And, oops, I don't need I don't need to be here anymore. Oops, I can quit. No, quit. Let me clear that. It's clear. There. Um, we're going to add a line to our stat plot. So if I hit graph again, the it's already there, right? But um, we're going to add a, a line to it. So I'm going to actually press y equals, and I'm going to enter this as equation number one. And I could have written down the slope and y-intercept I saw on the previous screen, and then from that I could just type it in here. But a better way to do that is once you're here, hit VARS for variables, and then go down to statistics. So VARS, and then go down to stats. Once you're at statistics, press enter. And if I come over to EQ for equation, one of the choices there is regression equation. Just so you understand what the calculator does is every single time I ask it to perform any kind of regression, um, and it doesn't have to be just linear, it stores the result of that regression in this variable, regression equation. And if you come in to, and to, to y equals and you grab it, it'll grab that actual equation, put it in y equals so that you can plot it. So if I press enter right now, it just quickly grabs that equation. And you can see, uh, y equals about 2.75 times x plus about 72. So it, it's got all the values in there. If I was typing this on by hand, I certainly wouldn't have written down and typed all those there. But it did it for free, so no problem. Now when I hit graph, in addition to plotting my data, which it did before, it also draws this regression line, um, which is just fabulous. It looks great. Um, I want to our book talked about, you know, doing regression without a calculator, and what basically it said to do is, hey, take a look at a couple points that are really close to a line that you think fits the data. So, you know, just kind of squint, look at it, and uh, once you've drawn a line that you think fits, um, pick a couple of the points <clears throat> that are on there. So I might, for example, pick that point, and this point here looks super good. With those two points, right, you realize each one has an X and a Y, you can use those two points to calculate the rise and the run of your data set, right? And when you look at that, that change in the Y value, and you divide that by the change in the X value, you get its slope. And then from with using the slope and the line, the point that you liked the best, you can write the equation of that line in point-slope form and uh, then s simplify it or morph it into slope-intercept form if you wish. Uh, anyways, that pretty much wraps up this the video. If we look at it again, what do we talk about? We talked about uh, setting up our calculator to take bivariate data, XY data, um, uh, editing that data, putting it in the calculator, um, plotting that data, and uh, a biggie is how do you, you know, automatically adjust the window so all the data points show up on your screen when you hit graph. We also talked about, you know, performing linear regression in the stats uh, thing and then using that to find the correlation coefficient and using it to identify the equation of the line of best fit. And then we added that line of best fit equation uh, to our data set. This is Mr. Roberts at Shasta High School. Have a good afternoon.